Hey, back. It's me, and, and here I am giving you one of my music reviews. Yes, it's my first one. We did a film before, and now I'm going to do this. Yes, a review of this. And um, this is For Your Pleasure, Roxy Music, 1973. I'm going to just talk about it and, like I do, ramble away. And if you enjoy these, don't forget to like them. Okay, so let's talk about it. Right, Roxy Music. It's 1973. I'm 12 years old. And starting to take music quite seriously. With me 50p pocket money, yes. I have 50p pocket money. So when you start off with 50p pocket money, you think, um, you know, you get into something like that. And to buy an album was quite difficult. So I was buying singles probably first. That's how you start off. But you want albums. You want albums. And I remember at the time, records, you needed at least two quid. I don't know if two quid sounds nothing. But then it was a lot to get an album. And I, in fact, at some places, albums were about £2.40, something like that. So you needed at least two quid. You could probably get some for maybe one hundred and fifty. that sort of price. Anyhow, so you need to save up your money. And my brother, he had a paper round. He was a bit, he'd be older than me. And uh, so he had a bit more money and he could save up. And he, he started to buy albums. As I did, but I had to be very, very clever and save. Um, and he obviously had a few more albums than I did. But um, he, I, um, I remember Roxy Music came out with Virginia Plain. That was their big, big single at the time. And... I thought, well, this is amazing because it, it actually didn't sound like anything at the time. We were supposedly in the glam rock era. And I think at the beginning, Roxy Music, just by the appearance and what they were, got almost shoved into the glam rock thing. But they were never glam rock. They were, really weren't. They were, they were something very different and better than glam rock. It's like Bowie. Bowie got shoved into glam rock. And as we know... Bowie was far, far greater than glam rock, yeah. Glam rock, well, I don't know. You know, there were some interesting people. Uh, I mean, like T-Rex, for instance, they were um, put into glam rock and they were better than just that. Um, they'd been going a few more years and I think that's all. But that's another talk, another talk about that sort of thing. Yeah. But let's go on to Roxy Music. Roxy Music were indeed categorised, I suppose, as something a bit off, left centre, art rock, but even prog influences, but a mixture of everything together. And they were, I think, looked at a bit sort of thing. I remember, you know, all whispering Bob Harris on Old Grey Whistle Test. He saw them and he wasn't impressed. Oh no, mind you, he wasn't all this. I mean, we love Bob, whispering Bob, but he was a bit of a fuddy-duddy sometimes. He was great at others, but I think he saw Roxy Music and thought, what the hell is that, you know? And um, there they were on all the Old Grey Whistle Test. The Old Grey Whistle Test is another great programme because it was like... When you discovered it, again, we discovered it at quite a young age, I did about, let's say, about 12. It was, you realised it was actually a good alternative to Top of the Pops, because Top of the Pops is all we had, really. Um, and when I saw, when you saw Roxy music, you thought, wow, this is, well, this is something, because they, they were playing, I think, um, the first appearance from the first album, and, um, Again, they were weird, but interesting, very interesting to look at. 
And so that leads me to this For Your Pleasure, the second studio album, which was released in 1973. Um, and this album was, for me, something that I really got into and grew into and played a lot. Uh, my brother actually bought it with his money and therefore I was sat listening to it and listening to it. And I just kind of, uh, especially when you don't have many albums, we played this album constantly. He played it and played it and he kind of really got into it. Um, and it, it just became something that just re repeated viewing, listening, viewing, it would was a near lad. Anyhow, listening and um it it sounded it sounded pretty special and for me i think that listening to the album moved me into the listening uh into areas which were not quite as easy to hear which was like yes um early genesis um because you didn't hear these on mainstream or you didn't really uh, get them on mainstream now so um this album is full of wonderful music and tracks and it's got the genius it was in fact the last album that brian eno was on in this group and brian eno as we know is the man that went on to um, work with so many great artists and um, was such an influence, you know, with Bowie and right through to you 2 and just loads and loads of artists he's worked with and still does, as well as his solo um, career. Um, but his influence is definitely on this album. But so is the rest of the group. I think what is interesting is you hear like Andy McKay um, playing the sax. The saxophone is actually really wonderful, the way it weaves around in the music. And, and of course, Brown Ferry's vocals. I mean, and he's writing, because he wrote, contributed such a lot to this album in terms of his lyrical content. Um, it... It, uh, oh, and I uh, mustn't forget the Manzanares guitar. Wow, that is great as well. There's something rather special about that. Um, the whole album is just great. Um, the other thing about this album is that the title, um, the, the opening track, um, is a classic Roxy Music um, song, which any concert you would go to, they would be playing it even nowadays if, if they got back together, etc. which is Do The Strand. Now, it, it was never released as a single. When this album was out and promoted, it was Pajama Rama, which was the second signal following Virginia Plain. And Pajama Rama was never on any album. You had to buy the single. I remember we had the single, but, you know, you had to have a single. So um, that is um, really, really interesting. Very interesting. As you get due to strand, that just, just puts you in, into the whole mood of the album. It's absolutely wonderful. It really is. And then you go into all these uh, other great tracks, um, like Editions of You, Grey Lagoon, um, In Every Dream Home, There's a Heartache. Oh, what a, now that track you could talk about for a long, long time. It is amazing. That is like, almost like a prog rock kind of, uh, song that just really gets into it and the title track of For Your Pleasure as well. I mean, it just, the whole album has such, includes just such wonderful tracks. 
and the, it, everything works. The whole studio production, everything beautifully, it works together. So this album means quite a lot to me. You know, um, I got it um, basically as soon as I left um, home and I left. Uh, went on to university, I got this album and I've got it here now on CD um, and it's it's still really quite treasured and listening to it and I never tire of it over all these years of listening to it. It's just an amazing album and I think it's uh, Roxy Music at their height this has to be Roxy Music at their best. It's They did go on and became, I would say, more mainstream, but not in a bad way. Um, they produced some really good albums, but this, this album um, will always have a special place in my heart. It may not be the best album. I think Stranded, for instance, the one that comes after this, is very, very good as well. Very good. And they went on and produced other good albums. Um, but this one is always special to me. It's always that period in time when I was discovering music and it was the whole music was opening up. You know, it was, well, opening right up. And then I was thinking, this is good. This is good. This is what I want to you know, carry on, and it helps you a lot in that era. Um, definitely as a, as a child, or turning into a teenager, then music was so important. And this is it. This is it. So, if you've never heard that album, you need to get listening to it. Aye. You young ones, get listening to this. Yeah, it's good. It really is. It's good. So, I'll leave you now and uh, stop rambling on like I do. And everybody, don't forget, take care. Enjoy life. Be happy. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.